Hi everybody, it's Miss Carrie back with another cool lesson for you guys. Today we'll be going over page 4, 5, and 6 of Mill Bay's grade 1 book that we use in our classes. We're going to start with a little bit about how to read actual sheet music, what we refer to as standard notation. So for our page 4 that we'll be going over in our Mill Bay grade 1 book, we'll be talking about the staff. When we read music, we read music off of what we refer to as the staff. As you can see, the staff is made up of five lines and four spaces in between the lines. Each line is going to represent a letter or a note, and each space is going to represent a letter or a note. Please keep in mind that the lines are not a direct representation of our strings. A lot of people mix that up, and that will get you in a little bit of hot water because it's not the same thing, okay? So these five lines and four spaces are going to represent different notes that we play on the fretboard. They will sometimes represent open strings, but more often will represent actual frets that we press down. So our lines are going to go in the order of E, G, B, D, F from the bottom to the top, and the spaces will be F, A, C, E, again from the bottom to the top. So it's easy to remember a sentence for the lines. Our book says every good boy does fine, but I prefer to use every good band deserves funding. Now our spaces are going to be in this order from the bottom to the top, F-A-C-E. So we can just remember the word face. So what we like to say is keep your face in the space. Now when we play music, no matter what instrument we're playing, we only use seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So you're going to notice that the letters will repeat themselves. For example, we have two F's within the lines and the spaces, and we have two E's within the lines and the spaces. So it's super important to remember either the word and the letters than anything else because then it won't get you mixed up. And also, as we go through our letters, we do have duplicates. So knowing where they fall in the stop will help you to not mix these up. And writing the letters on top of your notes is a really bad habit to get into because then when you do have these duplicated letters, then you won't know which one you're supposed to actually hit. Now our music is going to be chopped up into what we call measures by bars. And this will separate basically our measures from each other. So we'll come back and talk about that a little bit more um, in the next video that we're going to do. We're just kind of going over some of the basics real quick here. Um, our clef is the next thing that you're going to see on our staff. When we put the clef onto the staff, it's going to tell us what group of letters we use. Now in guitar, we actually only use the treble clef. So the only grouping of letters you have to worry about is the face and the space, and the every good band deserves funding. Now the treble clef, as you can see here, is also sometimes called the G clef. We call it the G clef sometimes instead of treble clef because it goes through the G line where this little swoopy part is here. Now the next page we have is going to be about types of notes. Types of notes are very important because they're going to tell us how long we hold our notes out for. So when we see a whole note, which is just a circle, it's going to have us hold our note for four beats of time. In other words, our note will ring for four beats worth of time. Okay, We want to make sure that we sustain or ring out the note and we don't let the note stop. The next type of note we have is a half note. A half note, as you can see, is hollow and has a stem. So this particular note, the half note, is going to have two beats. That's going to be a little bit shorter than our whole note. Okay, so a whole note four beats, half note is two beats. We're going to have a quarter note here. A quarter note is going to be worth one beat of time. A quarter note will be colored in and will have a stem. Now a quarter note is going to be a bit quicker, okay? And then our eighth note is going to be a little bit confusing for right now, so we'll touch base on these after we get through a few more pages. But the eighth note is going to be worth a half a beat of time. So they will be very fast, like how my pen was hitting there, okay? So it would be a little bit faster than our quarter. 
technically it's twice as fast as our quarter note. Again, when I teach this lesson in my classes, we tend to kind of skip over the eighth note and come back to it when we actually use it. The first four strings that we use actually don't even use the eighth note. So generally, I do touch back on that later on down the line. But since we're going over the book um, word for word here, I did want to mention it. Really quickly, I do want to point out that when we have notes that have stems on them, like the uh, half note, quarter note, and eighth note, stems can go down and stems can also go up. Please don't let that confuse you. A lot of times my students get confused with the directions of the stems. A quarter note is a quarter note, whether the stem is going down or the stem is going up. Half note is a half note, whether the stem is going down or the stem is going up. It just has to simply do with the placement of notes. So if a note is really low on the staff, generally the, st the stem here is going to go up. And if a note's really high on the staff, the, staff, the stem is going to go down. So that's basically page four and five, excuse me, page four and page five here. Page six, which is the last page we'll go over in this lesson, is going to be about our types of rests. Rests are super easy to remember because they'll be worth the same value as the notes that they shared the same name with. So when we have a rest, it's basically a period of silence. So we'll still be counting our beats, but we won't be making any sound during that time. That's why it's called a rest. So our whole rest is going to basically be a thick bar coming down from the top of the line. This would represent four beats of silence. Our half rest is going to be a thick bar coming up from the bottom of the line. That is going to equal two beats of silence. Our quarter rest looks nothing like those two, so it's easy to recognize. It's going to be a slanted line coming down in kind of a little squiggly C. So I usually explain this as a sideways Z with a little C getting on the end of it there. So that's going to be worth one beat of silence. Our eighth rest, just like our eighth note, is going to be worth half a beat. And this basically kind of looks like a sideways comma with a line coming down. So again, it's, these two don't look like either of these two. So it's a little bit easier to recognize. And the last thing that we go over here on page six is about time signature. Time signature is very important when we're playing music because it tells us how many beats we have per measure. So as we showed earlier in the page, how we have bars that come down and these are creating our measures. Whatever goes on inside of these bars or our measures is going to be told to us by what our time signature at the beginning of our song or our exercise tells us. So if we see a 4-4, four, four, that means that there's going to be four beats to every measure. Simply said, we're counting to four each time. 3-4 means that we'll be counting to three. 2-4 means that we'll be counting to two. The majority of this book is going to use what we refer to as the 4-4 four, four time that we'll often see as the letter C. The letter C stands for common time. Common time means the same thing as 4-4 four, four time. It's just that the 4-4 four, four is the most commonly used time signature. Therefore, they often refer to it as the letter C for common time. So the top number is the number that tells us what we're counting to. So 4-4 four, four we count to 4, 3-4 four, we count to 3, 2-4 we count to 2. The bottom 4 just tells us the type of note that gets one beat, which in this case is our quarter note. So basically, the best thing for you to review here, page four we have, page five, and then we have page six. These are basically the rudiments of music where we go over our staff, our notes, our rests, and our time signature. So in order to proceed to page seven and the exercises that show us the different strings and different notes, you would have, a, you would have to have a full understanding of what happens on page four, page five, and page six. So it's best to really fully understand all of those before you proceed on to the exercises on the next page. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video here on the first few pages of our Mel Bay Grade 1 book. In our next video, we'll be going over the notes on the E string on page 7, and we'll be doing the exercises that follow on page 8. Hope you guys enjoy and have a great afternoon. Take care.